I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? It is a great day, and I'm so very excited to have my next guest on the show today. So this is the author's edition that you might be ending up being an audition for the <laughs> upcoming movies. We don't know. So whatever the case may be, we have Kevin Fodder here today, and I want to welcome him to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me today. Anytime, anytime. So tell us about yourself and how you became a writer. Well, I'll tell you what, I, um, I, I have for the last almost 50 years, uh, I've spent my life uh, as a radio personality, uh, radio news anchor. So writing has always been a part of my life all the way back to high school. I mean, I was the editor of my school newspaper, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, and, and writing has always been something that's been kind of like second nature to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I decided <clears throat> that you know, I really wanted to sit down and write a book, uh, not so much because I felt necessarily that my experiences uh, in broadcasting were any different from anybody else's, uh, but because I felt like the business today, in some respects, gets a bad rap. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that talk about, oh, well, everybody's on their cell phones today, and everybody's you know, uh, playing video games and everybody's, you know, they're, they're paying their, spending their time paying attention to things other than what's called legacy media. And to some degree, as I can see, that is true. Uh, but the, the thing about it is uh, radio broadcasting has uh, gone into the business of phone apps. It's one of the ways that we now connect with our listeners personally, uh, the stations I work for have a, a feature called open mic on our apps, which allows the listener to send requests, send comments uh, over their phones. And that way it comes to us and we can play them back on the air. But wow. uh, again, it was just a feeling that I wanted to give young people a because there are young people that still want to get into this business. Yes. And, and, and I wanted to give them some hope that there was a reason and there was good reason for them to follow that type of a career path uh, because radio broadcasting, television broadcasting, uh, journalism, a lot of people are really critical about all of it. And I'm not saying that all of that criticism is totally unwarranted, but uh you know, it gets a bad rap. And I wanted to try and say, you know, hey, it's an honorable career. There are ways to make a career of it. And uh, it, it's something that you can consider. Definitely, definitely. You know, I started my career in podcasting, but um, also I kind of switched over to iHeartRadio for a little while. And so I had this voice, you know, welcome to, you know, it was like, oh, oh, she's got the radio voice, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but then I was like, well, wait a minute. I kind of like miss the fact that people don't see me, right. you know, they don't see me. So I went back to video. And I mean, I think the combination of all of that can be kind of intertwined where you it can, can be. You can have your radio personality. You can have your video personality. You can show people yourself and you can do it all. We're not those, we're not that far from the days when radio personalities were routinely seen on C-SPAN on cable television, cable channels. So oh, yeah. now pod podcasting has just become another extension of that. Exactly. It has. It has. I remember seeing like the camera in the, in the corner up there and you could see the guests. You could see them in their studio while they were interviewing their guests. And it was always amazing to see that. And I, I absolutely love it because you kind of feel like you're in the room with them at that time. So mm -hmm. you're telling me that your book is about this, is about the future of radio and how this is still a career that you can literally be honorable to be a part of. That is really what it what it's aimed at. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a it's a story of how uh, a, a kid who grew up uh, in a midwestern American town like Dayton, Ohio, and grew up around great broadcasting not on radio, not only on radio but on television. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not that far here in Dayton from Cincinnati, where the Avco network. Uh, happened, and that is where you had people like uh, Ruth Lyons, who was the, you know, they, they call her the first lady of television, 
and for very good reason. Uh, anyone who wants to explore her background, she was a trailblazer. Uh, you want to talk about a lady who broke the glass ceiling very early in time. Uh, she became a television executive for a major company and her, her program, her daily Monday through Friday, 90 minute program was watched by more than a million housewives every week. And I mean, those, that's kind of, uh, if you think about it, it was about the same kind of audiences and thereabouts that, that Oprah had when she was on television. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, that's, it, it was an amazing time because they incorporated the elements of talk with music, with entertainment. There was a live orchestra on the show. And many of the musical acts of the day of the 1950s and 1960s, you know, people like Tony Bennett, who, you know, just passed away here recently. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the Osmond brothers, when they were like you know, three or four years old, all appeared on that show. And uh, it, so it was very inspirational to me. And then uh, in 1964, when the whole world was uh, smitten, if you will, by a certain British rock group, uh, and every teenage young lady uh, in America, you know, wanted to marry Paul McCartney or John Lennon or George Harrison or Ringo Starr my cousin was just as crazy about. And so, so one day I'm over there at their house, uh, spending a little time before school started. And my uh, cousin, Suzanne uh, said, Hey, I want to show you something. I'm going to call the radio station and I'm going to ask them to play a song and they'll play it and dedicate it to us. So she did, they did. And the light went off uh, over my head. And it's like, uh, wait a minute, you mean to tell me that this guy sit, gets to sit in a room and play records and get paid for it. Exactly. That was my idea of a job. That's it right there. <laughs> and from there, uh, I was pretty much hooked. I hear that. Oh my gosh. You got bit by the bug very young. Yes, I was. And, and it is <laughs> the only thing I have ever done in my life. Wow. So, wow. I mean, I, I mean, I think, uh, I think I spent about three days picking up, uh, golf balls on a driving range and that was about the only thing I uh, other thing I can ever remember doing you know once you find that one thing that you love to do it's very hard to compromise absolutely and very hard I, I have been fortunate to be a broadcast educator in addition to being a broadcaster I've taught in a local college and mm -hmm. uh, I tell my students all the time uh, it doesn't matter what business you get into uh, find something you like to do, because if you find something that you like to do, um, you're never going to mind getting out of bed in the morning to go do it. Yeah, yeah. So that's always like been this. my thing. I love this. Mm -hmm. I love speaking to people, and I love people telling me their stories. And, and, and I love music too, don't get me wrong, but I think that all kind of encompasses the person and their choices, their choices to be a writer, their choices to be a musician, their choices in life. And there are so many people out there that need to be kind of persuaded. Okay, so what would it be like if I did that? That's why I do this show. And for you, that's why you write your books. Right, because I just wanted to tell the story. Now, you know, I have been blessed over 50 years of doing this to have met some incredible people uh, and, and not just in the world of music, uh, although I've met <laughs> I've met a gobs of people. Uh, one of my favorite people in the entire world uh, that I encountered through emceeing concerts uh, was Martha Reeves from uh, the Vandellas. Um, we had Martha and the Vandellas, we had the Crystals, we had, I don't know, Tommy Rowe, people like that, Little Anthony and, <clears throat> and the Imperials uh, at these uh, concerts in Columbus, Ohio. So the show, is, <clears throat> the show is ending and I'm being the dutiful DJ, you know, leading the applause at the end of the concert and all that. And um, Suddenly, Martha turns around along with the lead singer of the Crystals, and they come back to me. And 
you know, Martha kind of takes my, my arm and says, sweetheart, <clears throat> you're the DJ. You're supposed to be up here singing with us. And I'm like, um, wait, wait a minute. You guys are the stars. Uh, it's just like, oh, get up here. Oh and so gosh. I'm I'm like, they're, they're singing, you know, the old uh, good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I know the words for this. So uh, I go up and I start singing and uh, Martha and the Vandellas over here and the Crystals over here start going into six part harmony behind me. And I'm standing there and I'm thinking to myself, what in the world am I doing? <laughs> but um, it, it was uh, one of the most more amazing experiences that I've had in my life. You know, wow. uh, being at, because being on stage and, and again, I, I, I'm very much the performer because, I mean, I've done uh, musical comedy in, in high school uh, theater and, co and some college theater things, even though I didn't really go to college. Um, I did uh, community theater work. And yes, I, I did a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the movie is called The Killer Hornets. It's a very bad B-grade horror story. <laughs> Uh, but I, but it, it was really cool. Was the, we, oh we, sh we, we shot the film. It, the film was written by a gentleman that I worked with at the college. Isn't that, wasn't that the one that got released? It's like black and white. Is that the no, one? No, no, this, it's different. This, okay. one is, this one is still pending release. It's a, oh. the, the, it's in the final thought, CGI stages now. I thought that was the one I saw. I'm no. not gonna lie. <laughs> but this was but, but this was shot in a uh, town near us and and it actually is set around a tiny small town radio station and i was the maniacal radio station owner you know who was generally ticked off at everything in the entire world and uh, i could play the character very easily because you know i worked for at least a couple of those guys yeah. and and so um, you know, what happens is the, me, my character discovers this box out in a field somewhere in farmland, Ohio. And, uh, it, it, uh, the chief engineer of the radio station looks at it and apparently it starts calling, transmitting to some, somewhere. And actually what it does, what it did was it started making people listen to that guy's radio station. I mean, this is a type of type of device that if they could ever build it, every company in America would be wanting one of them. Um, but uh, instead, while it did attract people to listen to that radio station, it also attracted this big swarm of killer hornets about the size of your fist. And uh, then, then we had a, a true national emergency. And uh, the good news is they did end up killing all the hornets uh, but we will we'll just uh, won't divulge how at this point. <laughs> wow. So do you have your book on hand with you right now? I certainly do. Hold on here. Let me reach it here. Can we see it? There it is. Awesome. Turn it up. Confessions of a radio junkie, of which I will admit I am. <laughs> and uh, the title uh, actually was suggested by my boss at the radio station. Um the front cover picture, which, you know, again, it's just me behind a radio board, uh, that uh, was taken uh, in uh, the late 1980s when I still had a modicum of hair left. And uh, it uh, was taken at, at WING in Dayton. So nice, nice. Wow, Dayton, Ohio. I haven't been there in many years. But I tell you one thing, you know, radio is radio, radio DJs, DJ, the, the radio DJs are amazing people because you guys have met so many different people, but you've seen so many different personalities. And I've never seen, I have, how would I, how would I put this? I've never seen a radio DJ fight back at an artist. Right. Um basically. Most of the time, what the radio personalities are trying to do, and by the way, there are not, there are not enough radio personalities anymore. I, I grew up in the, you know, the days of listening to, I mean, we're talking bigger than life radio stations. 
uh, we're talking about, you know, I mean, WING back in the days was certainly one of those for a small Midwestern town. Uh, but I was, you know, I've been in the shadow of, you know, stations like uh, CKLW up in Detroit, uh, the Big Eight, which, uh, I, I mean, believe it or not, we, we in Dayton, Ohio could hear that radio station uh, at night. And again, here, here, here's my station in town giving away, doing cash call and, hey, the cash call jackpot is $105 and uh, no answer this time. We're going to take the uh, cash uh, amount and bring it up another $5. The next cash call will be worth $115. No, CKLW is giving away a Camaro for you and a Camaro for your friend. And again, just a bigger than life sound and uh, the personalities matched it um i grew up you know hearing uh, wabc in new york at night uh, you know dan ingram and cousin brucey and uh i i had the opera walt baby love i mean in, in, on orfm and i had the opportunity at, about mm, two years ago when he was getting ready to come back to WABC to have a conversation with uh, cousin Brucey and was very impressed. I mean, what is radio missing the most of today? Um, honestly, besides personality, it's being local. And WABC in New York has kind of resurrected itself. Uh, you know, it's really hard to make an AM station get an audience these days, but yeah. they have managed, they managed to do it. They've got about a half a million people a week tuning them in and they're in the top 10 stations or right about the top 10 stations in New York. Uh, but they've done it by being local. Yeah. And that is, that is my biggest concern about radio today. Don't get me wrong. Some of the national personalities are very, very good. And, you know, I, I'm not going to take anything away from any of them. But I also think there's room in radio for good local radio personalities. And I've, I've been privileged to know many of them uh, over the years. And uh, that's the biggest thing that I think we're missing. Wow. Well, if you've ever wanted to be a radio DJ, then now is your time. Yeah. If, it, if, it, if there is a... If there is a hole or a gap in something that needs to be filled, we're calling all DJs. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, uh, one of the funniest things, you know, that, that I had the opportunity to do when I was at WING, I always filled in for their morning show host, uh, a gentleman by the name of Steve Kirk, who uh, was there for 25 years. Prior to that time, he had spent a couple of years at WSAI in Cincinnati where he actually booked the Beatles for a concert at Crosley Field and lost money on it. What? <laughs> yeah. How do you do that? Um, here's what happened. They, as he told the story to me, uh, they, uh, it was a beautiful, hot July day uh, in Cincinnati and in 66. And so they took the cover off the stage. Well, now remember, this is July in the Midwest, and you guessed it, about five o'clock in the afternoon, Mother Nature decided to rain all over the place. And um, obviously it drenched the equipment. Yep. It, That's it created, how you lose money. <laughs> it created all yep. kinds of problems. But the real hero of the day was John Lennon. Uh, John Lennon, you know, of course, the Beatles managers are running around yelling and screaming. And John Lennon, John Lennon finally spoke up and said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are we playing tomorrow? And they said, St. Louis, John. He says, well, how long does it take for us to fly from here to St. Louis? And they said, oh, about two hours. John Lennon said, well, the, the answer is simple. And he turned to my buddy, Steve Kirk. He said, you go out there and you tell everybody to come back tomorrow at noon with their ticket stub and we'll play the show at noon tomorrow. After we're done, we'll go to the airport and fly to St. Louis. And that's what happened. 
Wow. The only, the only problem was uh, keeping had to rent that place twice. Keeping the keeping the Beatles in town overnight required hotel, required additional security, and all that sort of stuff, and that's kind of what blew the budget up. Yeah, he had to do everything twice. Yeah. Wow. So, 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 so when I was filling in for Steve on WING, I knew that I had to be to do something different. I didn't want to be trying to just do what he does every morning. And so our production director came up with this crazy idea uh, that when I would do the sports report, which I did every morning, like, like 740 or something like that. Uh, as soon as I read the story about the Reds, then I had a, you know, cartridge tape that had the sound of a telephone ring. It's like, just go ahead and hit that button and answer it because you, know, you hear this phone pick up. And I'd say, good morning, 1410 WING. And then I'd hit another card. And then it would be a conversation between myself and the production director playing then Cincinnati Reds owner Marge Schott. Except it was like something like, good morning, Jason. <laughs> and, oh, good morning, Marge. How are you? Well, as you can see, it's a wonderful day, you know, and uh, usually the conversations, uh, uh, Marge Schott, of course, in addition to being the owner of the Reds, was a car dealer, and she'd usually be trying to sell me some sort of wrecked car or something like that. In the case of this one uh, bit, she was trying to sell me a Pete Rose's Corvette, the little old baseball manager who, who only used the car to get back and forth from the racetrack so oh um gosh. so and and, and so th that's the type of personality radio that that i grew up listening to and th that i liked uh, you try to entertain you try to be funny yeah uh, and then sometimes you have to be serious yeah. i mean we that very morning that i did that bit on the air uh was the morning after the san francisco earthquake so we were, you know, we had serious stuff to talk about, but we also had fun. And that's yeah, kind of you what, gotta do that. you what a radio gotta, morning yeah. trip to me. Yeah, you got to alleviate people's worries and right. things. You got to kind of be that kind of person. Well, I want to thank you so very much, Kevin, for being on the show. I appreciate it. Where can people find your book? Uh, it's in places like, uh, like barnesandnoble.com. Uh, and it's really not an, it's not a big book. It's a quick read. Uh, and it, it's not going to really set you back very much money either. Probably, you know, 10, 20 bucks, something like that. Right. I got you. But it's worth it because you know what? I think that everyone should have a book in their hands. You know, I love books. I love the physical book. I love having the books and I, I love reading them. I like sitting in a corner with a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and a biscuit or something and reading the book, like spacing out on everybody. And if it's an audio book, I like to put my earphones in and then just looking outside at the, at nature, you know, or going to the beach or something to that effect. So, you know, your book would be probably one of those books that you can actually just sit on the side and read and, and just relax and, and get engulfed in. And like, like Kevin said, if you want to be a DJ, please do, please do. There's plenty of room out there for you. Yep. Please do. <laughs> Absolutely. Of that, you and I certainly agree. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And we'll have Kevin's information in the description box, wherever it may be, wherever you're looking. Thank you again so much. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. Bye.